everybody! This is my second post-Worldcon video. It's going to be a book haul. All the books that I bought or got for free, plus books that I got signed. Most of the books that I got signed I already owned. I took them with me to Worldcon to reduce the temptation of buying more books just for signings, which worked out really well. I recommend doing that if you can. I'm going to start with the books that I bought myself because there are only three of them. This will go quickly. The first one I got at Michael Swanwick's signing, which is actually not at the convention, but the evening before on the Tuesday, he had a signing for the launch of Not So Much Said the Cat at a bookstore in Kansas City. I got the arc of this from NetGalley and I read it and I reviewed it, so I will link the review of it. I really enjoyed this story collection and he read one of the stories. It was the Woman Who Shook the World Tree, which was one of my favorites from the collection, so that was really great. And of course it was a signing and he signed it for me. I was super awkward. I did not talk to him at all at the signing because I am apparently not good at talking to people at signings. You're gonna notice the trend here. I just didn't talk to people even when I like was really excited to see them. So Chris from CRISPR's Book Nook went with me to that signing and because we knew we were going to be there at the bookstore on the day that the Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin was coming out, we pre-ordered our copies and we picked them up there on Tuesday. So that's the other book I bought there. Um, I have just read the first chapter of it and I intend to blaze through this as quickly as possible. I've only heard very positive things from people who got review copies. And the fifth season, the first book in the series, won the Hugo Award for Best Novel novel at the ceremony when I was there, which makes me even more excited. One of the last things I did before I went to Worldcon was my review of Ghost Talkers by Mary Robinette Kowal, and I said in, at the end of that that I was going to get a copy and get it signed at the convention, and I did, and I got really lucky because I bought one of the last two copies of it at the convention. Seriously. And yes, I did get it signed. This is a very beautiful book in person. The cover art is very impressive. Who did this cover art? Jacket art by Chris McGrath. I recognize that art style now. He does a ton of tour covers, um, like Max Gladstone covers, which I love so much. Now it's time for the free books. Um, every day there was a table um, up in the exhibit hall and they replenish it a couple of times during the day. And yes, I waited in line at least two times in order to get to the free books table first. I did not go as crazy as some people. I tried to be discerning and only take copies of things that I thought I might actually be interested in, and I didn't want to take copies of things that somebody else who might enjoy it more than I would could take. If that makes sense. I lost track of that sentence. <laughs> um, I got some really good ones that I was very happy to see. The first one is a book that I have actually read, and that's The Speed of Dark by Elizabeth Moon, and it's about an adult autistic man um, trying to decide whether to take a cure for autism. I thought it was a very good book, but I, I actually personally really disagreed with the ending of it, but not something I want to quibble about because I believe Elizabeth Moon has an autistic child. Um, so I would really recommend, especially for people who want to read about autism intersecting with science fiction, I was very happy to get a copy of it. Then I grabbed a copy of Enemy by Kay Eason. This is a fantasy novel. I think it was maybe originally self-published, but it's now out from 47 North, which is Amazon's imprint, basically. Um, I first heard about this from my dad, which is actually kind of rare because I, I usually hear about new books and stuff from BookTube and friends first, but my dad grabbed this when it was on a Kindle deal, and he told me, hey, this is a fantasy book you might really like because he thought it was unusual. So I added it to my list and I was like, it's there, I gotta grab it, it's free because the ebook is like really expensive. I also think that the cover doesn't look like a standard fantasy cover. It It's possibly because of the font that's used for the title, but uh, whenever I look at it, I think it's science fiction when in fact it is fantasy. Um, let's see if there's something about cover artist on here. Cover design by M.S. Corley. My I like the simplicity of it, and it's very blue. Next I have Behind the Throne by KB Wagers. Wait, I think it's Wagers, there's only one G, so Wagers. Um, 
The tagline says, Once a gun runner, now heir to an empire. I know I've heard of this book before because it has this thing on the back that I've heard before. It says, Behind the Throne begins an action-packed new series with a heroine as rebellious as Han Solo, as savvy as Leia, and as skilled as Rey. I've probably heard about this on one of Thomas's Mailbag Monday videos, now that I think about it. This is about... Um, Hale Bristol has made a name for herself in the galaxy for everything except what she was born to do to rule the Empire. When she is dragged back to her home planet to take her rightful place as the only remaining heir, she finds that trading her ship for a palace is her most dangerous move yet. I actually think this sounds really great. There's something about this premise that I really like. It seems to be very heavily compared to Star Wars, which isn't necessarily my thing, but I am willing to give this a shot. This is from Orbit, in fact, and I do really like Orbit stuff. Next I got Breathe by Douglas A. Van Bell. This is a short science fiction novel. When I first picked this up, I thought it sounded really great until I read it, the back of it more closely and realized that um, the main character's affair is a major source of tension in the plot, and I'm not sure I like that so much. But basically, it's about nine people are trapped on um, a failing space station. They are running out of air, so it can only recycle enough air for four people. So five people have to die, and our main character uh, may be the first to die because she has been sleeping with the base commander and his jilted wife doesn't like her, which is why I say I'm not so thrilled about reading this now, but I will give it a shot and see if I like it. Isles of the Forsaken by Carolyn Ives Gilman. I read her latest book, Dark Orbit, at the end or the beginning of this year, basically. I did a whole review on it. I really like that book. Isles of the Forsaken, I know nothing about. It's a fantasy novel, not science fiction. It was published in 2011, and it's published by Chizine Publications in Canada. Uh, CZP had a lot of books there, and a lot of them looked pretty good. They're not necessarily my type of thing, but I grabbed this because somebody said, hey, there's a book by Carolyn Ives Gilman, do you want it? And I said, of course I want that. Angels and Exiles Stories by Ives Maynard. This is another CZP publication, and it is blurbed by Ursula K. Le Guin, for one, and it has introduction by Joe Walton, which will always pique my interest. It says on the back, in these 12 somber tales, ranging from Baroque science fiction to bleak fantasy, I just want to know what Baroque science fiction is, Maynard brings to life wonders and horrors from space travelers who must rid themselves of the sins their souls accumulate in transit to a young man whose love transcends time, from refugees in a frozen hold at the end of space, to a city drowning under the weight of its architectural prayer. Architectural prayer, that's interesting. Here are windows opened onto astonishing vistas, stories written with a scientist's laser focus, alloyed with a poet's sensibility. So that's some pretty high praise on, on the back for these stories. I'm actually really interested in this now. Clash of Eagles by Alan Smale. This is the first in a series. It's fantasy, um, a world where the Roman Empire never fell, and the action takes place in North America, and parts of it are definitely in Cahokia. I had to get this because Jane from Yes Miss Jane read it and said good things about it, and I was actually really intrigued at the premise of a Roman legion in North America, in Cahokia, um, and you know, a, a place where a Native American city-state continued on or whatever. If you have read this one and you have thoughts on it, please let me know down in the comments because I'm, I'm eager to know what people think of this and whether they think I will like it or not. <laughs> the last free book is Fearful Symmetries, edited by Ellen Datlow, who won a Hugo Award at the ceremony while I was there uh, for short form editor. Um, this is a collection or anthology including all new stories by people like Pat Cadigan, Jeffrey Ford, Caitlin Kiernan, Garth Nix. Uh, so I recognize some of those names. It's another CZP publication as well. Um, it looks like it might be a little bit more on the horror side. There were like a lot of horror suspense or urban fantasy books on the free book table and that's why I was so picky about what I got because it's not necessarily what I really enjoy, but edited by Alan Datlow, who has such an amazing reputation in the field, I will try that. And of course, it has a story by Garth Nix in it, and I love Garth Nix. 
And finally, I will try to quickly show you the other books that I got signed. These are not things that I bought at the convention. I already owned them and I took them with me to get them signed. The first one, the very first signing that I went to with other booktubers was of course Becky Chambers and we got our copies of The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet signed. So that is what it looks like. Next, I got To Like the Lightning by Ada Palmer signed, so that is what that looks like. Then I got my new copy of Wild Magic by Tamara Pierce signed. I thought it would be cool to get this signed because I have my first original copies of Wild Magic and Wolf Speaker signed by her. I never met Tamara Pierce before Worldcon, but my mom had gotten those books for me at a library conference in 2002, I think, and she uses purple ink. I didn't know that was her thing, but my other books signed by her also have purple ink. My copy of The Just City by uh, Joe Walton, and it's not personalized because I wasn't in that line. I was very sleep deprived and I was actually feeling ill. I didn't want to go through one line and then another, so Brie was in the Joe Walton line, so I asked her if she would take my copy of The Just City and get it signed so that I didn't have to go through that line as well. And she did, but that's why it's not personalized because I wasn't standing there asking for it to be personalized. Um, I regret not standing in the Joe Walton line because I didn't get to talk to her and apparently she was so nice to everybody. Connie Willis was signing there, which is really cool. She's hilarious. Uh, so I took my SF Masterworks copy of To Say Nothing of the Dog because it is the funniest, best thing I have read by her, or at least novel-wise. Um, so I got this signed and it says, best wishes from the past and future. So that was really cool. She was also handing out the science fiction historical trading cards, which are, uh, they were invented by Walter Day. So I now have one of them. I'm not sure if they're all for Sifwa Grandmasters, which is what Connie Willis is, but I now have one and I don't know if I should start collecting these or not, but that's a really cool idea. <laughs> And the last thing is Gail Carriger. I got Curtsies and Conspiracies signed. This is the second book in the Finishing School series because I grabbed it by accident instead of the first book. And she was very lovely. I actually asked her a question because, I don't know, she was very approachable and she was chatting and taking pictures with people and that was really nice. So those are all the things that I got at Worldcon or that I got signed at Worldcon. If you have read any of the books that I hauled, please let me know what you thought of them. Get me excited for reading them because once again, I have increased my unread bookshelf and I need to get on that. I am on a book buying ban unofficially, um, hopefully until the end of the year. We'll see how good I am. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I will talk to you again in my next video. And until then, bye. There you go. Oh, you look so cute. Oh, you're so cute. Okay, you can go away now if you want to. <laughs> All right, there you go. Oh, you, you wanna sit on my lap? No, you want to go away. Okay.